Latinos Out Loud podcast. Wow. Yo, 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 we're in a library, yo. I want to scream, I want to yell, I want to be a Latina out loud, but I can't, and I shan't, because we are, look where we at, the Instituto Cervantes. Google it real quick. This is an iconic institute here. This is where people like learn Spanish, get accredited. The teachers come here, the kids come here. There's an exhibition, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes that is here right now. What's up everybody? It's your girl, Rachel La Loca. This is Latinos Out Loud. We're on location. We're location out loud today here in New York City in Midtown Manhattan. I love my city so much. I mean, I represent Brooklyn all day, son. Cough up along where I'm from, okay? But we're in Manhattan today and there's just so much to see and so much to talk about you guys it's pride month happy pride month which let me tell you oftentimes people are like oh latinos out loud you're a pride podcast i'm like okay not really but we celebrate and embrace and definitely want to elevate those voices so Latinos Out Loud is really whatever you want. Uh, it's a smorgasbord. It's like so many different things. That sancocho. But happy Pride Month. It's really exciting. Shout out to all my LGBTQIA plus peoples out there. Woo woo. Okay, I talk about my kids a lot on the show. Donovan and Benjamin, my eight and five year old, have a lot of questions and they're very inquisitive about Pride Month. And there's a slight obsession, um, but I think a healthy one. Un por ejemplo. Benjamin likes to change the background of my phone every day, like the wallpaper and stuff. Um, I had a beautiful picture of them and I haven't seen that in weeks. Like they do the emoji stuff, but lately it's every pride background that Apple has is on my phone every day, which I love it. I mean, my kids, they love rainbows, right? I love rainbows too, but I think they're really understanding what this month is about because of the questions. And I have been trying to answer to my best LGBTQIA ability, but there are some questions that I'm also confused about. So maybe our guest today can also answer some questions that I have. But shout out to the kids out there who are embracing classmates and teachers and others around them that are celebrating Pride Month, that are a part of this community, and that are vocal about it. That's what this show is all about. This show is about being vocal, about projects, about strides that Latinos are making in their craft. But people can also talk about their culture, their background, their lifestyle. And I, I love when guests come on the show and do that. I think we're going to get that from our guest today. Um, the other thing I want to say is like Donovan has been asking me questions and he has some classmates and some people at his school that he wants to know more about their lifestyle. I basically told him to ask them too. Like I think that's one thing that, well, at least as a mom, that's what I arm and equip my kids with is if you have questions, don't be shy. Go up and ask the source. I can tell you a lot. I can tell you textbook stuff. I can tell you things that I know from like my friends and my gays, but like go ask and inquire and learn and embrace. That's the most important thing. Embrace. Other thing I want to talk about is my dad. Shout out to my dad. We just celebrated his 83rd birthday, y'all. He was born in 1941. Whoop, whoop. Like, yo, that's, that's a lot of years. Um, I'm really thankful to have my dad in my life. He's a wonderful father. Um, he's been asking me to listen to, to, listen to one of the, my podcast episodes. This is going to be the one, okay? Because I usually make fun of him on the other ones. Um, so this is the one where I'm not going to make fun of him. And I'm going to give him straight shout outs. Burr, 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 burr. Dad, I love you. It's so nice that you are in our lives. You're a strong, fearless leader. My father, it's so apropos that we're at the Instituto Cervantes because my father was a public school Spanish teacher for John Erickson High School. Shout out to 126 in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I often went with him to school. It was like take your kid to work day a lot. I used to have what the doctor told me, schoolitis. Like I didn't like the second grade. I just didn't. And, you know, maybe that's because Miss Harmon had this like metal ball that she would tell us to be quiet with on the inside of her desk. And I was short. So I was always at the front of the class and like the first row, first seat. And I'd like flinch. And my dad would take me to school. And the good thing that my dad would do and shout out to him now that I'm a mom, I get it, 
is he would have me sit in his friend's classes. So I was sitting in like advanced classes in second grade. I was sitting through geometry. I was sitting through algebra one, biology. And I do remember vividly a lot of lessons learned. So shout out to my dad. Happy birthday. Shout out to all the senior citizens out there. Okay. AARP in the building. Okay. All right. Um, I have to get to my guest. I'm so excited because y'all know I get excited when I have a friend who's a guest on the show. And that's what's happening today. Okay. So he is a journalist, a filmmaker, he's an author, he's so wonderful and brilliant. Please stand up, giving him give him a standing O because he also he's very in the in the trenches of the theater, uh, you know, theater community here in New York. Please put your hands together for Mr. Alberto Ferreras. Hey. Hola. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You Usually I will be like, what's up? You know, all loud. But yes, we're at the Instituto Cervantes yes. um, in the biblioteca. Exactly. We're in the library. Yeah, we're getting the shushes. Hi. Hey. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Thank you to for To be hearing here. Latinos out, out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it it's is. The, it's the Pride Month edition. Yeah. Latinos out, out loud. I think I'm going to change the logo this <laughs> month and put the rainbow exactly. underneath it. Or well, just know, grab the background from my phone. Um, okay, we have so much to talk about. All right. We got to get right in. Let's do it. I, all, I, I like to tell the Eloeleros, like, if we're friends, like, how and why we're friends. So I'm just going to, like, talk about it off the bat. Habla. I worked for Alberto. Alberto and Trina Bardusco, shout out to Trina, cast me in, y'all know the special, the documentary that's on HBO that's like over two decades worth of content, Abla. Abla had so many different installments. There was Abla, Abla Ya, Abla Texas, Abla Ibota, Abla Celebrity. I mean, there's so many Abla more. Now, Abla Loud. Yeah, there's, there's, we made a lot of Ablas. Pero you were probably one of my favorite shows. Oh. Because, yeah, be, I mean, at some point in Abla, they started kind of like, we started looking for, you know, super famous people, right? Which I understand because, you know, it's HBO was Ratings. the client that they said, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. when we did Abla, yeah, it was all about finding New Yorkers that were cool, that had something important and unique to say. And so you were perfect. When you talk about being a Dominican. That's it. La Dominicana, baby. That was, okay, so just so you have some context, that was my first paid Hollywood gig. Oh, wow. My first paycheck received <laughs> yeah. from a major. So when I got that check from HBO in the mail, first of all, I saved it. It's in a photo album. I mean, I cashed it. You know what I'm saying? But like, I saved it. It's probably laminated. I, I think I was very proud of it. I went home. I showed my parents, and the fact that I got to talk about my parents and my oh, yeah. upbringing and being Dominicana, they were so proud. They showed it to everybody. It's on YouTube. It's still in the catalog, right? Like yes. people can still yeah. see it on yeah. HBO. You guys, if you haven't seen it, so I was in part. Two, I believe there were two parts of Abla Ya, and I came, um, I think, right after the Tato guy. Um, <laughs> everybody, and some of those people are still my friends Lulu and Lala. Oh my god, yes. yeah. Um, the actress, um, the theater actress, I can't remember her name right now, she's gonna kill me. La de Argentina, I forget her name, but anyway. What an amazing documentary to really highlight the Latino experience because all of our experiences are so different. Exactly. And that's really what it, it highlighted. And I learned so much from it too. And you had some really iconic people, especially in the celebrity edition. Like, you know, <clears throat> I think everybody, it's so funny. Like, it, we've been doing that for 20 something years. Uh, the last time we did it, I think, was in 2022. That we did habla loud. I think that was the last one. Pero, you know, I meet people that have been fans of the show for a long time, and they would say my favorite segment ever was this girl who talked about her, like you know, quinceañera, where they were drinking many shavits. <laughs> like obviously I that love was that you. So much. Uh, but I um, love it. again, you know, <laughs> sometimes the the person and it, I, the, I think Instagram, like TikTok, proves that. Sometimes the person that is telling you something that is very emotional and valuable is not necessarily Julia Roberts. It's, right. it's Rachel Strauss. I do, once in a while, uh -huh. get recognized for Abla. Yeah. 
and I love yes. it so much. Porque también yo era gordita and sí. different hair color. I'm, I look so different, you guys. Like, hit me up in the comments when you watch it because you can be sí. like, that was you. Yeah, that was me. Same girl, just uh, different facade. Yeah, you know? unstoppable. You could tell You could tell back then that she, she was going to be famous. I it was know, just ma'am. a matter of time. <laughs> I want to tell you something else beautiful that came out of me being a part of Abla. Are you are you sitting down? Well, yes, I mean, you're oh sitting down. Yes. Okay. So Chrissy Hines. Uh huh. I love me some Chrissy Hines. Oh yeah. Chrissy Hines worked production on Abla. She's a beautiful soul. I just you know those people that you like. I'm gonna keep you in my pocket. Yes. We connected on social and like we didn't really speak all that often, but once in a while we would. She called me out of nowhere last year. Her number popped up on my phone. I was like, Chrissy Hines? When Chrissy Hines calls, she yeah. calls, you stop everything. I think I was like playing with my dog. I'm like, get out of here. Shoo. I was like, hi, Chrissy. And she's a dog person too. So Very she probably much. won't be happy that I said to shoo to my Apollo, but I did. And basically, Chrissy nominated me to be part of ECHO, which is an organization that works with the White House and the Senate oh, wow. to elevate their initiatives within the media that we're creating. It's a membership of like maybe 70, 75 people and like Hollywood executives, people that I was in the same room with these people at the White House and I'm looking around me. I'm like, am I worthy? Yes, I'm worthy. You are. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. <laughs> I, I, I earned being here. I got here. But if it weren't for Chrissy and if it weren't for oh. you, I would never have like had that connection. And now I'm a part of this organization making strides and elevating like White House and U.S. Senate initiatives, bruh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm in politics now, but not really because I'm not I'm not political. Like, no, but, but you have the level of influence that you deserve. It's not like what we do sometimes, you know, of course... You know, we all want to be in the cover. Well, I'm not sure if I want to be in the cover of the New York Times. But, you know, not everybody makes it to the cover of the New York Times. That doesn't mean that a lot of people are not doing very important things that are not being reported by the mainstream media. So I love working to, with these people. Yeah. We have meetings. Like, I got invited to the White House and the Senate chamber. I was in the building, Alberto. I have a little <laughs> White House notepad. Like, I only use, like, two pages of it because that I'm saving forever, like my paycheck from HBO. Yeah. I have to laminate it, note to self. Okay. Exactly, yes. Plastificado, para que no se tropee. Like the furniture. Oh, I took so many pictures. You know, I had to document it. Like, it's in my brain that I was there, but I want my kids and their kids to know that mommy was in the White House. I got a tour. Like, I was in... Anyway, we've already spoken about this on the podcast, and I'll probably talk about it again. There's some really exciting things. There's a lot of motion happening with Echo right now, yeah. and I'll tell you guys more. Um, the other thing I want to say is, During my time at People in Español, I also wanted to celebrate you and just figure out how to elevate everything you were doing. Bees for Beauty, you had your book that was also featured in the magazine. Like, you have so many notches on your belt. I know, right? You would think that by now I should have another belt or something. You need another belt. <laughs> I wish it was like a martial arts. <laughs> um, but you get an extra belt every couple of years. No, pero the thing with me, <clears throat> and it, I, you know, I've talked to a bruja about this. I'm not making this up. So it's official. <clears throat> it's official. I talked to a bruja because I said, girl, uh, some days I want to write a novel. Some days I want to make a show, a TV show. Sometimes I want to do theater. Sometimes I want to do... And I said, is this normal? Should I just focus on one thing? Because all mm. my friends and people are like, you should, you know, if you don't focus on one thing, you're never going to accomplish anything. And I'm like, but that's not me. And the bruja told me, that's Heavy not home. you. She said, that's not you. If you want to do... If you want to paint a, a picture, you paint a picture. If you want to take a photograph, you take a photograph. You have to allow your creativity to manifest whatever way, you know, it, it dictates. You should not force yourself to be only one thing. And I'm a Gemini. You're a Gemini too, I'm right? a Leo. You're a Leo. But I, I do good Leo. with Geminis. My son is a Gemini. My dad is a Gemini. Yeah. Exactly. But when I was Geminis, you know, it's not like it's vanilla it's... or chocolate. It's vanilla and chocolate and strawberry. <laughs> So it's so, multiple personalities, yes. and yeah. and so I'm at, I'm at peace with that. I'm first of course I'm super grateful that you know you supported me when I was a novelist, which I Always. still am. It's just it's harder to get the time to sit down and write a novel in this day and age. Yeah, pero BS and Beauty is still out there. Believe it or not, a network has the rights 
to try to turn into a series, pero I'm not going to talk about yes. it until it's... Porque so many stars have to line up in the sky for these things to happen. Yeah, yeah, So you, yeah. you know, just cool. You keep going. You, you know, life goes on. And, and then one day you get the news and then you, you know, if, take exactly. action. Exactly. If you get the news. And if you didn't get the news, you know, you're happy that it went that far. Uh, but you just keep on trucking. You keep doing the things that you're passionate about. Yeah. There's so many times that I'm like... Latinos out loud, 400 episodes. Should we just sunset this thing? Like, should I pull the plug? Or like, what else can I do here? But no, I. and then I wake up and then I'm like, Ch-ch-ch. I'm like, no, 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 wake up. You're still a podcaster. This is still, there's still a need for yeah. this content. There have been networks that have expressed interest, same thing, and nothing has come of it yet. But I'm like, that's how I, it's like reassurance that this is, some, this feels right. This feels like it's in demand yep. and people want to listen and hear about you and the multifaceted Alberto Ferreras. That gives me inspiration too because I often say to myself, am I doing too much? Too much of like everything. Should I concentrate on one area? Should I focus? Should I put some of these balls down and just have one ball in the air? But that's not me either. I'm do 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 That's me. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, sometimes it's part of your nature. And I think for a lot of people, especially with, you know, with media everywhere, like now we're being tormented by by the media. That we used to, like, you know, chase content. Now content is chasing us. Yeah. It is very important that we do things that we're passionate about. Speaking of uh-huh. why we're here. Yes. Okay, so your latest passion project. I mean, it's so exciting to have just experienced American Latinos there are these projects out there that I guess are eye-opening. Like, you know, if you're Latino and you know your history, I minored in Puerto Rican and Latino studies at Brooklyn College. Shout out to BC. And so, like, I learned textbook stuff. And my wonderful professors, whom some are mentors today, taught me about Latinos in the media and the Latino struggle and our existence in this country before it was even notated, right? But there is an exhibition right now here at Instituto Cervantes curated by this man right here that I would love to dive into right now. Um, I'm going to end that phone call. Um, Thank you, Apple Watch, for making it so easy to (laughs) decline the spam risk. Um, tell us about American Latinos. Tell us about how this started. Oh, I, I heard wow. the story, but I would love for you to share with the LOLeros <clears throat> how this came about. So this is what happened. I mean, wonderful and terrible things happened during the pandemic. And American Latinos, actually the full title is American Latinos 1935-1945. is one of the really wonderful things that came out of the pandemic. Uh, so at the time I was working for a video that was commissioned by the Smithsonian for the the Museum of the American Latino, which it doesn't exist as a building yet, right. but we have a gallery in Washington, D.C. We have a wing, right? The Molina wing? Exactly, the Molina Family Gallery, exactly. So I was working on that thing, and I needed a couple, a couple like two or three um, historical photos of Latinos in the U.S. And I had a researcher working with me, and she suggested this picture. And when I saw it, I was like, well, first of all, it was a beautiful picture from 1936, and I had seen that picture before. It's a, it's a Mexican girl who's holding her face. And I was like, oh, I've seen that picture before. And it was by the famous Dorothea Lang. Um, and I could use it. And it was in the public domain. And I'm like, this is great. Wow. But what's the story of, what, first of all, what is the title of this picture? Which I had never heard before. And the title was Daughter of Mexican Labor. Mm. And I'm like, I've seen this picture a million times on PBS, but nobody had ever told me that it was actually a photo of a Mexican girl in the U.S. in 1936. Oh. So I said, so where did it come from? It came from the Library of Congress. Do they have any more pictures of Mexicans in 1936 in the Library of Congress? Well, surprise, yes. 170,000. <laughs> they had 100. There's a, this picture was part of a collection, which is the Farm Security Administration um, Archive. And it's... Basically, these 10 years actually is less than 10 years, it's eight years. But between 1935 and 1943, the American government went out and took pictures of everybody. And these were uh, some of the most influential photographers in American history, wow. like Dorothy Lang, Russell Lee, Walker Evans, uh, um, Jack Delano, who went to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Edwin Roskam and his wife, Louise. And these were people that in the 30s and the 40s basically went out to photograph everybody. And because they photographed everybody, they photographed 
a lot of Latinos. We in the building. Yeah. We've been in the building. <laughs> We've been in the building. Yeah. So um, when I started digging in these 170,000 photographs, I found that there were at least 10,000 photographs that had the, uh, the term Mexican in the title. And there were at least 5,000 photographs that had the term Puerto Rican in the title. Weapa. And that doesn't mean that every picture was a portrait of a Mexican or a Puerto Rican. Sometimes there were landscapes in Puerto Rico. But mm. because it was the pandemic and there was nothing better to do, I spent every single night sitting in front of the computer just looking at pictures and saying, again, I was looking for two or three for my project. I ended up with 150 selects. Wow. And these were so amazing. These, I wanted to go out on the street and tell people, look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the Library of Congress. Um, so got to a point I used whatever I needed, but it's almost like the pictures told me, you found us and now you're going to walk away? What the hell? Oof, you have is... to do something with us. And there's one particular picture. It's a Mexican cotton picker. And do she talked to me one night. She was like, you cannot walk away from us. And um, And I'm like, okay, what do I do? Because this is in the Library of Congress and... I'm not allowed in a place like that. A surprise. The Library of Congress is a wonderful place and it's a wonderful website that you should go to right now. Dale. Este, because it has not only amazing resources, but our past is there. And, and um, we, we have access to it. And we have access to it. And It's amazing. I ended up building American Latinos 1935-1945, which is a 15-minute uh, immersive experience. And it's in English and in Spanish. When you walk into the gallery, it's playing one or the other, and it alternates. Narrated by Olga Meredith. Exactly. And it has music by Lalo Guerrero, who is the Frank Sinatra of Chicano music. Lalo, Lalo yes. Whose who's, who's son is a dear friend of mine, Dan Guerrero. No way. Which you, have, you know Dan? No. Do, you have to, because Dan okay. is, is like, he's like, I, I was going to say he's your twin, but he's, you know, 93 years old. He looks fantastic. He's I have in better an old shape soul. Than Dan exactly. Holler, connect you know, us. Totally. No, okay. no, no. He, because you two have to, he has to interview you and, he, and you have to interview him. That's all. So thanks to Dan, I, I got some music uh, by his father and they put together this installation that for me is like a time machine that brings you back uh, almost 100 years to times when I used to have a hard time picturing Latinos in the US in those years. Mm. And now with these photographs, I can do it. You can do it. I mean, if you watch it, I, that's, I think, the impact that it has on people. Yeah. Um, it certainly is impactful. I got to experience it. The photos speak to you. Each photo, you just, it conjures up, what were they doing that morning? Why did they choose this clothes? Why do they look kind of happy, but you can see the struggle in their smile? I was telling Alberto this before. You know how we always be like, yeah, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Latinos in this country, we've been struggling. That's accurate. Now it's depicted in this wonderful immersive installation where each photo teaches you a little bit about that struggle. We see photos of women carrying big tanks of water up a hill. We see old cars, tires being changed, cotton fields. Um, the, Rich people, the poor people, everything. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's every, there's so many different ways that the Latino experience manifests in these pictures. Picking pecans. I oh, have to God. tell you, when I saw the picking pecans photo, yeah. I started like itching because I'm very allergic to pecans. Oh, I'm like, oh God. my God, imagine if I had to like pick them for a living. First of all, I would probably die, exactly. but, or maybe build the uh, immunity. Maybe I would get over it. <laughs> but that was a job. Yeah, it was a job. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, so. You... And also, you know, it's very interesting. We, we all, Latinos are often presented or depicted as recent arrivals mm -hmm. to this country mm -hmm. uh, that you know they just crossed the border type of thing oh yeah like and dominicans they, like we exactly. just got here uh, excuse me it's not it's not the case and i think these pictures that's one of the points it proves and also because some of these photos that were taken in the 1930s they were not taking you know a, you know but but at the border there were Latinos in Minneapolis. There were San Latinos Antonio. in Colorado. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was everywhere. And there were towns, which is another one of my favorite things, entire towns in New Mexico where people spoke Spanish because that's all they spoke. They were not... Uh, it, the, the, the English language had not, made, had not made it there yet. Right. So that is fascinating. I don't know. I, I, I love these pictures and I love the stories that... 
that and the stories that we can find because yeah. one of the in my one of the things I would love the installation to do is to encourage anybody you anyone who's listening to this podcast to get in there and look because again there's 170,000 photographs in the Farm Security Administration Office of War Information collection. What, what are you going to find? What are we going to find? I hope somebody finds an ancestor. I would, I'm going to put this out in the universe. I would love for someone to find their great-grandmother yes. or their grandmother depicted in one of these photos. As I'm watching these photos scroll and like, you need a neck to see this installation because it's a lot of this. <laughs> so like do some neck exercises. Um, your neck is very important um, because it's immersive and there, there's this beautiful curation of a story from start to finish. You see struggle, you see party. Yes. You know how we always be like Latino self to party? You have to see some of these pictures. Like we've been partying people. We've been in pageants. Like I love <laughs> that that tradition is still very much alive. But I couldn't help but think that my father was born in 1941. And this this could have been, you know, any of our ancestors. Absolutely. And like I lean on my ancestors for like answers sometimes. And here I am seeing them in these photos. Guys, please come to the Instituto Cervantes. The other call out that I'm going to make right now, and feel free to jump in, is this needs to live on. I'm calling out everybody, my CUNY people, Dr. Virginia Sanchez Corral, Maria Perez y Gonzalez. I know you listen to this podcast. Let's bring this to CUNY. Let's bring this to Hunter. Let's bring this somewhere accessible for the students of the Department of Latino Studies and Centro at Hunter for them to experience. We need to help Alberto. And it's not just helping Alberto. It's helping the community. These are our roots. These are our roots depicted in beautiful Mastered digitally crisp photos with beautiful music and oh, wow. Olga Meredith's voice behind it. Our stories, you know how we're always like, our stories need to be told. Our so this is our story told in a very unique way. So this must be seen by more people. You're gonna make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. Cry. <laughs> we people like yes, people. people like crying. <laughs> oh my God, Rachel, please. No, but this is beautiful. I am so happy that you came to see it. I am so happy that I got to see it. I, I moved. The Instituto Cervantes Instituto in New York. Cervantes. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done a podcast from an instituto. This yeah. is an institution, people, and an iconic one. I walk by this place all the time, which, you know, the installation is here now. The exhibition is here. But this is a beautiful, these are beautiful grounds to also check out. This. Like yeah. gardens and yeah. so many books here um i feel i feel very latina sitting here right now um but i just want to congratulate you also for being so multifaceted multi-dimensional you do everything so well how do you do everything so well um i i have no idea <laughs> no you know i don't do stuff all the time but when if there's a project that i feel like requires then you know I learn it. We didn't even talk about Hamlet and Harlem. Oh my god, yes. And the miracle. Can you talk about that real quick? Those do two that projects? Okay, so I, I do theater. I do a lot actually anybody listening to this, there's an there's a theater in the East Village called Theater for the New City. We love Theater for the New it's City. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the Crystal Field, she talk about like an institution. She has been running this place for 50 years, giving opportunities to, to people in the community to stage their plays, to tell their stories. And, and she gave me the chance to. That's so beautiful. we did a play a couple of years ago called Hamlet in Harlem, which was a very funny comedy about a, a white boy who wants to do an all Latino uh, Hamlet that takes place in Harlem. Problem is that he doesn't know shit about uh, Latinos or Harlem or Hamlet. Oh my God. Uh, so it was a very funny comedy that actually tells you the story of Hamlet from a different um, perspective. And and they also we have a show which is, I am, I'm, I'm in it. I am the show called The Miracle. And it's about singing and who got permission to sing and who didn't. Do you sing? Um, in the shower. In the shower. Exactly. Well, I used to sing in the shower. Everybody can sing and everybody should sing. And this show is about how I got over my fear of singing in, in, oh. in public. And how amazing it was and how it cured my depression. So, yes. Things. Okay, are these coming back? Because you do revivals. Well, the, uh, on June 6th, we're going to have, I don't know if we're going to have time, 
but it's going to be for free here at the Cervantes. We're going to do one more uh, no, show, The Miracle. Okay, see. I'm in there please, for please, sure. Please, please. I just want to celebrate you right now, give you your oh, flores. Thank you. Oh. I mean, I've been tracking your career now for so long. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thanks for kickstarting my show business career. Okay, well, you deserve it. So I, I was working corporate at the time, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to make money off of my passion. You proved me wrong. Yeah, I know. I'm a little I'm okay. too. I'm a little I'm for like, okay, here. I'll give you a topic. Rhode Island is neither a road nor an island. Discuss. <laughs> I am a little verklempt. Um, shout out to Linda Richmond, Mike Myers, one yes. of my favorite sketches on Saturday yeah, Night Live. Uh, but yeah, that's the truth. I didn't think that I could do it. And I didn't think oh I'd ever God. get paid for it. And then you proved me wrong. And we're all going to end up working for you, girl. Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> we're with me. I, I, yes. I just want to work with my people. I'm so proud of you. Watching you is very inspiring. This is really inspiring. I'm so glad I got to experience the exhibit, too. I'm going to be yes. talking about it for days. All right. Yes, please do. Because the pictures are so... Oh, and this is free, by the way. Oh, hello. Yes. It's free 99. You guys heard? <laughs> like, we love a good deal. I'm all about the bargains. Yeah. I don't shop retail. Okay, look. Come here. Here, it's free. We need to make this live on. If you are an institution, whether educational or some sort of nonprofit, if you have a space, we don't need a lot of space. We just need like a projector and some screens and some seating and some like good acoustics, you know, some walls. <laughs> exactly. This can live really anywhere like that I just mentioned. Holler at me, slide in the DM, holler at Alberto Ferreras. Let's figure out how this, how we can give it arms and legs and extend it like a centipede. It needs a hundred legs, okay? I hate centipedes, but I like this centipede that I'm describing right here. Um, thank you for listening and watching another episode of Latinos Out Loud. Shout out to Neoman, shout out to Eddie behind the scenes right now. Thank you, Instituto Cervantes. For having yes. us. I feel like dancing flamenco right now. I'm probably going to flamenco my ass out of here. <laughs> um, I saw a book on Carmen, one of my favorite plays. Okay. Um, this is very uh, impactful for me. I love when these episodes like just tickle my fancy. This one certainly tickled me. Um, thank you so much, Eloeleros. Be sure to follow us. Follow Alberto. Where can they follow you? What's your social? Um, um, Alberto Ferreras underscore NYC on Instagram because I'm hooked on that crap. But you can also look me up on Facebook. Alberto Ferreras. I have little horns. And we got to wrap it because La Biblioteca is telling us to... Wrap it up. They're just telling us to... Sh Yes. Okay, this is like a scene out of The Music Man. Okay, um, you know, Mary and the, the Librarian. Okay, played her in eighth grade. Love The Music Man. Okay, going to wrap up the episode. Please follow us at We Are Latinos Out Loud. Follow me at Rachel La Loca. You can give us a call at 978-LATINOS. Thank you so much on that note. We out. <laughs>